go. Drop Camera roll. I think this is certainly the, the biggest season that we've ever had in, in the most challenging. In terms of just the overall scope of the show. And last year was level three. This is like skipping to level seven. It's intense. It was huge for the season in terms of those initial brainstorms, was just knowing that this is the kid's last summer before high school. It was an emotional time and a scary time, too, because you didn't know what the future was going to hold. So we wanted to use that as an anchor for sort of the character development this season. Now. If season two was about the quest to get back to normal, season three is about the inevitability of change. We see our kids in season three really wrestling with that transition to adolescence and the fact that that invariably does mean leaving some things and maybe some people behind. We're not kids anymore. I mean, what did you think? That we're just gonna sit in my basement all day and play games for the rest of our lives? There was this seed planted early on in season one of Joyce and Hopper having had a relationship in the past. I've always kind of wanted to see what that was or how that came to fruition. And this season, we start to see much more of that. I want you to feel like this can still be your home. The relationship between Joyce and Hopper, I, I think is really fun and sort of complicated. And I think there's a lot there that we've been sort of discovering each season. Like, we have history. Kind of opens him up as a man, and it allows him to be vulnerable in a way that he never has been in the show yet. It's a very interesting new dynamic. Even though maybe you didn't grow up in Indiana, I do feel like people can relate to having these ordinary lives. And this excitement of that adventure might just be around the corner. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. This is going to be my new Stranger Things Season 4 video. They just dropped a new trailer and a featurette because it's the one-year anniversary of the premiere of Season 3. They talk a lot about what's going on during Season 4, so we'll break it all down. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. Of course, I'll be doing videos for the Season 4 episodes, and I will talk about what's going on with that because of all the delays. They're going to be filming again really soon. There have been a lot of questions about season four actually happening. Yes, they are making a season four. I'll explain what the producers said about that too, because everyone's wondering if there'll be more Stranger Things after this season. We learned that the title of the first episode is The Hellfire Club. Because of this tweet, that's probably a reference to Eleven and her friends, the main group of characters. Maybe it's the name that they give themselves after getting back together. They split up briefly at the end of the season for summer break when school got out. That's kind of what you see them talking about during this, like the kids growing up as they're slowly driving away at the end of the season. There's this whole theme in the show the last couple of seasons about them growing up, becoming more mature, taking more control over their destiny. So maybe they reform the group to save Hopper and stop the Russians in a much bigger way. Because it's implied that they're leaving town, they're going to be heading to Russia, or at least heading into the Upside Down to fight the Mind Flayer. We get a much better look at Jack and Hagar from Game of Thrones, playing what seems like one of the administrators of this Russian prison camp that Hopper is stuck in. He typically plays assassins and really badass killers on the other shows that he appears on too. He kind of did that during Game of Thrones, so he definitely plays to a type. So it seems like he is the level-up villain from the Russian Terminator character last season that Hopper went toe-to-toe -to -toe with in the finale. If it wasn't clear because Stranger Things is all about parodying and referencing 80s pop culture movies and TV shows, this guy was supposed to be a version of Arnold Schwarzenegger's Terminator from the first movie. Everyone press F in the chat for Alexi. And speaking of funny coincidences, David Harbour had a lot of scenes with Alexi during Stranger Things season three. David Harbour's character in the Black Widow movie is also named Alexi. Here's what's gonna happen. Natasha, don't slouch. I'm not slouching. You're going to get a big hunch. Mm, listen to your mother. Oh my God, this- up, up, All right, enough, all of you. I didn't say anything, that's not fair. He's playing Red Guardian, but his real name is Alexi. So it's just a funny coincidence that he's playing Alexi after having all these scenes in Stranger Things season three with an Alexi. I know everyone's wondering how Hopper wound up in a Russian prison at the end of the season after that big blast if he didn't travel through the upside down portal. 
Right now, the most common sense theory is that everyone was probably disoriented from the blast long enough for the Russians who did survive the blast to grab him in the confusion before anyone like Joyce could notice or take the time to look around the facility. By the time the police and the military made it down there, it had been long enough for the Russians to pack up everything that was left, including that, that white demogorgon that they teased and then take them back to Russia. They probably just grabbed Hopper to keep him from talking to the authorities and reveal exactly what they've been doing. Next big question, why are the Russians constructing railway tracks in the middle of Siberia? Probably to build a path so that they can haul their heavy equipment to another site where the barrier between dimensions and the upside down is weak enough and they can try and open another portal there. Early prediction that'll probably be where Eleven and the others face off against the Mind Flayer for the last time. The whole idea of season three is that the Russians were causing a lot of problems because they were trying to reopen another gate to the upside down. So the Mind Flayer will probably try to take advantage of that to break into our dimension again. Hopefully, because we're talking about big 80s references here, they might use that as an easter egg for the real world Chernobyl explosion, the big nuclear meltdown. So there's some disaster that happens at the end of season 4 with the Mind Flayer battle in this other portal. The rest of the Russian government might try to hide their actions by covering it up as a fake nuclear meltdown. And so that nobody will go to the site and poke around. Oh, it's radioactive. There's all this fallout. You can't go check and see what happened there. If you follow the Stranger Things writers on their Twitter account too, they've also tweeted a lot of the movies that inspire the season 4 storyline, and they're all basically prison break movies. I'm a Fugitive from a Chain Gang, Papillon, The Great Escape, which is an awesome Steve McQueen movie, Stalag 17, and Shawshank Redemption. Even if you haven't seen all those movies, you've probably seen at least one or two of them, I don't think I need to explain the plots of those, because basic concept that they all share in common is that people are stuck in prison in either trying to or successfully breaking out. Clearly, that's what this season 4 trailer footage is trying to set up. Hopper being stuck on Russian chain gang in the middle of Siberia during the dead of winter and either trying to escape himself or looking for help from other inmates or escaping with the help of Eleven and the other kids. Even though all the younger kids are noticeably older than the previous seasons, they're still just barely approaching high school. So if they go to Russia, they'd still need the help of someone like Joyce or the teenagers, at least like Steve and Robin. And even though they're the ones that stayed back in town, like Steve and Robin, they will be main characters during season four again. If anyone was worried that there were people that weren't coming back for season four, Billy was really the only part of that major group that was confirmed dead at the end of the season, and they could always bring him back as a hallucination in people's minds. So for the most part, everybody is coming back. But here's the thing about season four and the possibility of a season five, because everyone's wondering how they're going to end Stranger Things. What's the finale going to be? So in an interview, the Duffers said one thing, but then the producer, Sean Levy, kind of said another. So the Duffers claimed that the series would be a four season thing and then out, meaning that they planned to end it after four seasons. But then their producer, Sean Levy, said that we're definitely doing four seasons, but there's also the possibility, very much a possibility of a fifth season. So I think a lot of that just depends on their filming schedule because the kids are aging up so fast that they want to try and get these out as quickly as possible. So there was some rumors a while ago about them trying to film seasons four and five back to back, but I haven't heard any confirmation on that. It's just the possibility that yes, there could be a season five, which is why you haven't heard Netflix say anything about a final season yet. They could also wind up doing a Stranger Things movie to wrap up the series if they don't want to do a full season five. But one of the huge differences from season three is that they revealed all their episode scripts here in this post. And if you look at the stack here, zoom and enhance, there are actually nine different scripts, meaning nine different episodes for season four instead of the traditional eight. They did do nine episodes during season two, but that extra one was kind of for Eleven's field trip. So I'm just assuming that the extra episode during season four is just to give them extra time with the story to wrap up everyone's arcs if they don't do a season five. But it does sound like everyone's hopeful that they will because the series seems like it's more popular than ever. We probably won't find out about that for a while. And if they do push to a season five, that would also mean that they don't have their final battle against the Mind Flayer at the end of season four. There's something that pushes them into a big battle in the upside down for season five. They're going to be filming again really soon, but they only filmed for about three weeks before they had to shut down because of the virus. So maybe we'll see season four episodes by April or May next year, but I'll be sure to do an update video if Netflix posts anything official about that. Everyone click here for my last big Stranger Things season four trailer video and Easter eggs and click here to learn all about Michael Keaton coming back as Batman in the DC movies. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. I'll see you guys tonight.